going on everyone? Sneaky Mofo here, back with another Cheat Engine tutorial for you. In this one we're going to be getting a little silly with the Memory Viewer again, kind of an extension on my uh, other video that I did with the Memory Viewer. But I'm going to be delving into some more little techniques as well as getting a little into the disassembler. So we're going to be looking at some assembly code, but I don't want you to shy away from that too much. Um, I'm going to try to be thorough while not completely delving into the assembler part um, because I'm going to take another video to really drill down into that stuff. So if you have questions by the end of this video, feel free to ask and I will definitely try to get around to answering those questions. Um, or you can just take note of some things and the next video I'm going to be doing should be posted within the next couple of days at the most after I post this video. All right, so <clears throat> yeah, let's get started here. First, I have Mind Test, which is a freeware version of Minecraft, essentially a lot less featured, but it's perfect for some of the things that I want to show all of you. All right, so let's go ahead and attach Cheat Engine. We'll go to Window List here. There are two windows that this game keeps open, so I like to go to Window List to discern the two because sometimes it combines them together. So Mind Test Main Menu, that's the name of the window here. Window List, that's exactly what it's looking at, the window name. So we'll open that. And now we'll create a new world, ASDF. Create and play. Here we are. All right, so very under-optimized game <laughs> so it may look a little uh, you know laggy or whatever as I'm running around here so let's go ahead and um, you know if you're used to uh, things based on my previous videos or all you've done is search for ammo health things of that nature um, this game does things a little bit differently you can search for health here, these hearts, okay, and that will be the same. Um, you find health, it is health, you modify that after you find it, that's health, you found health, all right? But is it the same when you find dirt? All right, so here we've got three dirt, let's look for three dirt. Bite, first scan. Continue, four dirt, continue, seven dirt. All right, this number is already changing. We can remove that one. Okay, continue. Oh, there's a couple changing there. Remove selected addresses, continue. All right, oh, there's one that changed. Oh, look, all three of these change. Remove selected addresses. Uh, let's do one more search for Joe Dirt. I'm just kidding. Get it? You ever seen that movie, Joe Dirt? Anyway, all right, so here we go. Let's move this down. Let's name this Dirt. Dirty. The Dirty Dirty. <clears throat> let's uh, lock the value just to make sure it is what we found here. Yes, it is. Dirt for days. Dirt for days. Okay. Let's unlock that value. Did we find Dirt? If we move dirt into another box, will that still be dirt? No, it will not. Okay. What we actually found was this container here. Whatever's in this container, you have that number of it. Okay. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that point by giving ourselves a couple more things of dirt. And then what we're going to do is get something else. Uh, actually, first, let's move dirt. We've moved dirt. See how this value is zero now? We didn't find dirt. We still have 10 dirt, but when we moved dirt, it this went to zero. Why? Because we found this container. Now we need to find this container, right? And then we can control how much dirt we have or flowers or whatever we have. So let's go ahead and get this flower. All right, now we have one of those flowers. Look over here, one. Let's change that to 20. Continue, lay down a flower, 19, 18, blah, blah, blah. 
All right, so are you kind of getting the picture of what that is there? 20. We didn't find dirt, we found container 1. Now we want to find container 2. So instead of, you know, we have 10 in container 2, looking for 10 and laying down dirt, picking up dirt, you can do that. That's completely fine. But let's go ahead and jump into Memory Viewer. All right. And where we are in Memory Viewer is right here, this exact address that is right here. It starts you off at that address. You can scroll up and down and wherever it just dumps you right there where you select. All right. So we have 20 which is 14 hex. We have 10 which is 0A. Let's go ahead and if we watch the memory viewer and we start messing with stuff out of container 2, look for something in here to flash red whenever we lay down some dirt. This one here, change to 9. We do have 9. Let's do it again. Change to 8. Could this be container 2? Let's add it to the address, or uh, add this address to the list, rather. Let's call it container 2. OK. Let's lock the value. Let's lay down some dirt. Look at all that dirt. Dirt for days. Cool. We found container 2. Holy crap. Great, right? You could do that really quickly with every other container, feasibly. Right? Let's uh, unlock that. Okay. Now, let's keep watching down here. Let's move the flowers into container 3 and watch for some other value to change. A bunch of values changed. That's okay. Let's switch to this and let's lay down a flower and watch again. This one changed. It changed again. See how we moved? It's in close enough proximity. This is typically the case with things like this. These containers in the game will be within close proximity to one another. So let's right click and say add this address to the list. Uh, container 3. Okay. All right. So now we have three containers. And we know that those are our containers. Let's just verify by locking that and planting the most awesome garden you've ever seen in your life. All right? Okay. Fun. Yay. All right. So we found that. Now we can continue doing what we just did, moving stuff into new containers and doing that. Here's another way you could go about it. The proximity between or the distance between each of these addresses okay what's the distance let's bring up calculator and make sure you have programmer mode selected and hex okay what is this address minus this address all right this is the larger address so let's subtract you know these numbers are the same so all we have to do is subtract 5c from 98 so 98 minus 5C equals 3C. If D4 minus 98 is 3C, I think we are in good shape to make some uh, assumptions here. D4 minus 98 equals 3C. Beautiful. What does that mean? We have eight containers. Could it mean that the distance between each container is 3C in memory? Let's try it out. Add address manually. Byte. Container. 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 Container 4. All right. And what we can do is say 3C plus this address should give us the next address up. So 3C plus, uh, let's go D4 equals 110. All right, so we want to say zero seven one six e oops e e ten, which equals zero. Okay, and the reason I went e ten is because one ten. If you increment d in hex, it goes up to e, and then this would be ten. All right, so let's copy this. All right, container four. 
<clears throat> now what we can do is go in the game, continue, and let's move 16 into container 4 and see what happens. There we go, 17 from what we had there. In this game, when you lock a value and unlock it, it'll still like keep one there in memory after you move one over. So that's why that little weird thing happened that you just saw. We did find container 4. Let's lock the value, and let's plant another amazing garden. Yay, flowers. Okay, so container 4, good to go. Can we do the exact same thing to get container 5? Let's go ahead and copy this address. Add address manually, container 5. All right, let's paste and let's do plus 3C equals that. So E4C is 0. We say OK. Add address, container 6. So we'll just do plus 3C here equals all right e88 okay that address manually container 7 yes i know i'm keeping it 4 bytes i'm doing that intentionally let's do plus 3c eec4 okay and the last one container 8 plus 3c is foo. Okay. Let's continue. Let's uh, move flowers into five, six, seven, eight. There we go. We found all eight containers, and I can tell you because I already did this before all of these containers, or at least the number of ones that I did before I stopped, they were all a distance of 3C away as well. So you could feasibly go ahead and enter all those if you're creating a cheat table, look for the base address, the offsets should be the same. Um, they might not be, but whenever you find the base address, typically they will be the same sort of offsets and things like that. All right, so. Yay, we found all the containers. So if we were writing a cheat table, we'd be good to go there. Um, now we can shift click these, then right click and say uh, change record type to byte. This is just to get you really familiar with utilizing the interface to change some things. Lastly, what you can do if you're writing a cheat table and you don't want to have a bajillion things there on the screen, you can say create header and let's call this main container row move that to the top by clicking and dragging click on this then shift click here and then click on this one and hold it and then you can drag it up to where the line is center right there with that let it go it moves all of those into here then we right click here and we say group config hide children when deactivated bam now I won't see any of the stuff related to containers until I select that the group and activate it and then they fly out and then I can do whatever I want to do right so that's pretty cool alright so that's just like another way to utilize uh, the memory viewer now up here this is the kind of stuff I'm gonna be really diving into in the next video but I want to give you just a quick little glimpse of things related to that alright so container one we could look for the base address and have that or if we want to actually modify the code, we don't just want to modify the value ourselves. Okay, let's put the flowers back in the first container. We don't just want to modify the value, we want to have the game do something completely different now whenever we get something related to container one. Let's have it give us 10 flowers instead of just one whenever we pick them up. How about that? right that's when you start getting into modifying code so the first thing that we need to find out is what writes to the address you have two selections find out what accesses this address and find out what writes to the address the difference very simple finding out what writes to the address is saying hey I want to know the instruction that writes the value to this address what's the instruction that says alright put 17 here in this memory address what writes that? Okay, that's finding out what writes the address. Finding out what 
accesses this address includes finding out what writes to the address as well as what reads the address. Okay? So that's the only difference. Finding out what accesses the address is finding out what re or what writes to the address, but also anything that's like I don't know, let's say there's a function that's constantly looking at this container and it's saying, hey, what's in that container? I need to know because I need to be subtracting this or adding this or doing this and that and putting this in that place and blah, blah, blah. You will see all those instructions if you look for what accesses an address. Okay, so if you're not very familiar with assembly, you're going to be getting a lot more results from the debugger in a second when we bring that up and you're just going to be like completely confused. All right. I'm still learning this stuff, so, you know, understanding the difference helps me out a lot as well. So, what we, what we want to do here is find out what writes to this address, to this container, because we want to try to modify some code. So let's attach the debugger, yes. Alright, now you need to do something in the game to find out what writes to the address. You can do a couple of things. You could lay something down, which is going to tell us, you know, a new value will be written to the address when we lay a flower down, okay? Our new value will be 16. So the instruction that told it put 16 here, okay? That's that, all right? Now, we want to see what modifies the address whenever we add one, all right? Boom. So, interestingly, even though this updated the val this instruction updated it's slightly different there's a count of two here but only one here we're not going to worry about that for now we're just going to understand that this is what popped up whenever we laid a flower down when our total was subtracted from and this is whenever we added from now the benefit of doing both of those things is that one of these may be easier for you to modify than the other for your cheats okay so let's look at the one for adding alright see this instruction here at this address this is this okay you're looking at the same exact thing okay and what you're looking at here is uh, the code that's the instruction that's happening to you know, whatever's here is being moved into here. This right here is our address, this container's address. All right, so CX, okay, is part of ECX. And this is where starting to learn assembly is really going to help you out. So you can kind of get familiar with certain things that you want to look for. All right, so. What does all this crap mean? What does it all mean? Okay, these are memory addresses. This is where these instructions are located at and these where these things are happening. All right? And ECX and EAX, those are called registers. Those are basically memory addresses for your CPU, your processor, all right? This is memory, external memory that you have in your system right RAM you think of a RAM chip or slot whatever you plug that RAM in that's memory for your system these registers are memory for your CPU and that's in your CPU you know that's actually in it so you know values are being added and subtracted you know calculations are happening and blah 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 in your CPU and things are moving from your registers to actual addresses in memory and blah 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 so understanding the difference between the memory that's in the system and the registers which are essentially your CPU's memory and that they interchange and, and speak to one another if you will and exchange information between the two um, you know that's basically what's going on when you see brackets like this that means a memory address okay and a memory address your system memory not the memory from within a register alright so <clears throat> basically here's what's going on here alright 
11 hex is 17 decimal. All right, that's important because you can really break it down and see what's going on in code here. We have 17 flowers right now, right? And that was, we're looking at the instruction that added 17 into this memory address. Now how do we know that this is the memory address that has the 17 in it? All right, well first, what's in ESI? Right now in ESI is this address, okay? This address is ESI plus 1C. That's an offset, all right? ESI plus 1C, that is an address somewhere in memory, all right? And that's denoted in the brackets here. So we're not moving something, you couldn't move something into ESI, the actual register, plus an offset, you would, you know, because there there's only ESI, that's the register in the CPU, that at the moment, ha it's pointing to a memory address, the system's memory, the system's, uh, you know, it's not called registers in the system, but anyway, so ESI plus 1C is going to be this, okay, paste, plus 1c equals what? What is that? Okay, this is our instruction that happened for the uh, updating to 17. Well, look right here. 716ed5c. That's what we've got here. All right. That is the address in memory. So whatever was in CX, it moved it into our container 1 memory address, 17. Here it is, 17. There we go. We just verified, right? So uh, I, gotta, I hate that Windows get trapped behind one another with Cheat Engine. I try to keep that stuff as uh, sorted as I can, <laughs> making sure I can get back to it. Anyway, so we see that. We see we verified the instruction here. We verified what's going on. This is our memory address. The move is happening with this going into here. By the way, uh, for Intel, uh, especially you know with Windows here, you're, you're going to see uh, this is the source, this is the destination. So you have the instruction that says add or move or whatever this over to this. All right, it, it works backwards like that. So. Um, we know that we have 17 here, okay? So per this snippet of code here, all right, we see EAX. What's in EAX, all right? EAX has one, all right? What's in ECX, okay? ECX has 11 hex, which is we saw 17 decimal. So what happened was ECX before this instruction, like up here somewhere in code, ECX was 16. And then it took ECX, which had 16, and it added EAX to it. And then ECX became 11 or 17, our new total. All right, so that's what happens. In assembly, when something adds, it takes from the source, it adds it with this operand, and then stores the value here in this location. All right, so ECX was 16, it added one to it, and then ECX became 17, or hex 11. And then when the, after the addition happened, it takes whatever is in CX and it moves it into our memory location. And we verified that an ECX here is 11 or 17 in decimal. And then it took that and it moved it into our address and memory right here. So I know what you're thinking. This is ECX, this is CX, how are those related? 
Okay. ECX is this. All right. ECX is a 32 bit value. CX is half of ECX. It's this half here of ECX. CX is comprised of CH or high and CL. Low. All right. CH would be this. CL would be here. So technically, at this rate, we could say CL. We could modify that to CL, and it would still give us the part from ECX that we need as long as it wasn't higher than FF, which is the highest you can go in hex before it spills over. All right. So basically, ECX is 32-bit. CX is the 16 bits, the lower 16 bits out of the 32 bits. And then you could break it down even further. You'll see like maybe CL or CH, or I'm sorry, CH would be here and then CL. Or, you know, EBX is comprised, that's EBX, this is BX, this is EAX, this is AX, this would be AH, this would be AL, this would be BH, this would be BL, and so on and so forth. So registers will break down, you know, the, the system will reference them in more optimal ways, okay? So all that it's doing is it's taking the lower half of ECX, which is CX, and it's putting it here. And that's it. So now what we can do is say, show this in the disassembler, all right? And here we are. This is our code in the disassembler. We can scroll up a little bit. Okay. So you see this JA mind test, blah, blah, blah. That's here. And then we move down to add ECX, add EAX or whatever. Uh, add EAX to ECX. I'm sorry. That's that. And so on and so forth. This little snippet of code is right here. We're looking at the same thing. So here we can do some modifications. Let's, uh, let's see, change a register at this location. All right, EAX, instead of 1, let's call it 20 and say OK. All right, boom, continue. Let's add 1. All right. Look how much that's going up. All right, spilled over into a new uh, container because we went significantly higher all right so let's continue let's I let's uh, hang on let's go ahead and do this let's like subtract a bunch of flowers here can we just throw them all away yes we can all right then we can move this one flower to here and instead of 20 let's change register at this location. All right, this is 20 hex. That's why it was giving us so much for every one. Let's just do 0, 2 and say give us 2, which is also 2 decimal. When we take a flower, this should go to 3, and then 5, and 7. See? It's pretty cool, right? So now, how do we make it do that? How do we make it to where when we come back into the game, we can find this exact location as if we found a base pointer, or I'm sorry, a base address, not a base pointer, a base address, all right, and have that in our cheat table, you know? Uh, basically, then you're going to be getting into AOB scans where you're looking for this exact array of bytes. These are the bytes. This is the code in the program, right? Some of these values, some of these bytes will change, especially things related to memory, which will change. The add instruction is the same, but these will change. In the next video, basically, I'm going to go into showing you how you can uh, really put this stuff to good use, and I'm going to delve in a lot more to the stuff that we were talking about. Um, I know I probably belabored the point a little bit, um, with this video I went beyond the scope of it somewhat but I just wanted to wet your whistle or wet your appetite whatever um, with some of this assembly stuff and if it looks like complete Greek to you hopefully the next video will completely straighten it out for you 
to a certain extent okay so yeah I hope that you found this video useful uh, it's pretty late I'm sorry uh, I sound a little <laughs> but it's late and I'm tired but I really wanted to discuss a lot of this stuff um, so feel free to ask me some questions uh, and let me know what you thought of the video if you enjoyed it what are some specific things that you might be looking to do in Sheet Engine and I can try to um, take that into consideration for the future installments and whatnot but uh, please give this a thumbs up and share it with anyone else um, and if you're not subscribed yet go ahead and subscribe because this is going to be an ongoing series for quite a while and um, yeah so thanks so much for watching and I will just see you guys in the next video alright take care Thank <music> you.